Ravenna Nightmare Film Festival, 15 edizione. Un benvenuto al regista Drecker Dreyer. Welcome to Italy, Drecker. How are you, Drecker? Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful city, beautiful film festival. Okay, uh, about your movie, The Arcadian, a very amazing movie, and it starts with the sentence very dark. Mm. The world as we know it is over. According to you, and without tell uh, too much about the movie, uh, for this first question, what does it mean? What is over exactly? Uh, before the beginning of the movie, to uh, set the world for people to build the world, um, it uh, exists uh, differently than um, than a, a nuclear or anything, you know, big uh, war. It's not the same kind of um, apocalypto, you know, different. Um, in our world, uh, most people who are uh, very wealthy, um, the, the high uh, part of society has found a way to leave the planet. They just go, they leave it, uh, leave it for the uh, people who don't have the money, the people who are um, uh, not uh, as physically good condition. And uh, it's maybe 50, 60 years since that time. And you start to see what uh, new society is created um, from that situation. Uh, once upon a time, there was a, an English rock band called The Stranglers. <laughs> they uh, did a song called No More Heroes Anymore. Mm. According to you and according the meaning of the Ar Arcadian, what about the heroes and what are they do in this world? A hero um, is, uh, to me, very subjective. I think everybody is... Uh, within them the capacity to either be a hero or a villain. And you are, through your life at different times, you do good, you do bad. One, maybe at the end, weighs more than the other, you know? You say, okay, now this is a bad man, this is a good man. But everybody does good and does bad. And in my movie, uh, which is very much uh, like a Western or a samurai movie, um, similar sort of uh, heroes and villains complicated. Um, you see that uh, the cycle of violence, the things that the hero does to avenge one wrong, makes a victim of new man, new woman, and then they come back for revenge. This circle never stops. <laughs> so uh, it just, um, as the movie goes on, you see more and more the consequences mm. of everything that happens. Um, in the Arcadian, you separate the movie in chapters, mm. and it seems to be similar to some books or graphic novel books. Mm. So it is a, a way to help uh, people to understand better which are the, the main point in the movie, mm -hmm. according to you. Um, the separation with the chapters for me was very important. Um, the Arcadian was and is a very uh, ambitious independent movie. Um, I don't like to compare to, to other filmmakers, to other you know, films, but um, when you're making a, a small movie, um, something that doesn't have you know, 10 million, 20 million dollars, you usually hear about um, keep the set small, do a one room, one house, one small place. Uh, you know, we shoot uh, up near um, uh, uh, Antarctica, top of Nova Scotia, uh, very far away. We shoot in Los Angeles. We shoot uh, down in the equator. All different uh, environments, all different places. And each one of these, uh, we went specifically because we wanted to have a uh, different feeling for different parts of the story. and making these chapters so that you, as the audience, can follow more closely as time skips ahead and you see um, different characters and different aspects without following uh, a, a very easy story from one to another. We have many, many characters, six, seven, eight characters. So um, mm. showing each with their own piece of time, 
I think helps uh, to tell the story as a whole. Um, you said before, and we, we saw in Arcadian, you shot in, uh, for example, Nova Scotia. Yeah. And the colors are very dark. Mm -hmm. And the, the movie is dark as well. And you uh, prefer to show a vision of a dark present to future in your movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I, <laughs> you know, some people uh, make a, a vision that's very hopeful. Um, I am not the kind of person who is either hopeful or not hopeful. I think, I, I think I'm a realist. And um, I see uh, a lot of things that are, uh, that are, that are dark in, uh, in humans and people. You know, I think we live in a very dark time. Um, and I think that... Uh, Things only look better when we look back. You know, I think uh, every day <laughs> when you're living in a modern time, you know, it's always a struggle, it's always a fight, there's always something wrong. And I think that uh, it's human nature to then look back at nostalgia and you say, oh, things were better then or things are better. But there's always conflict, there's always that darkness. So I want to, uh, to highlight that uh, in the future, um, you, will, you will still have the same kinds of conflict. It will just be a different setting. Uh, my last question uh, for Derek Dreyer, Dreyer um, as a director and as a writer as well, what, according to you, in your vision of these uh, jobs, uh, you have to do and you have not to do? Mm. Oh, I, I, help me a little more. I, yes, yes. According to you, uh, a director yes. has a limit in his work, and which one? What about <coughs> those limits? And the writer as well, what yes. about the limits? Uh, I, I think I learned to be a, a writer during the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, since, since uh, originally writing the movie, I've, I've written uh, science fiction novels, a graphic novel, uh, many things in the United States. Um, and the, as a director, I think that the, I've always considered myself more of a, a visual artist mm. than, than a filmmaker. Um, not because I don't, uh, I don't love making cinema, but I don't come from theater. You know, I come from uh, illustration, I come from photography, and uh, now a lot of what I direct uh, is music videos, uh, just uh, did one for Warner Brothers, a big uh, film for uh, uh, musical artists called Mystery Skulls. Um, and I always look at um, visually what will tell the story. So for me, uh, my, I guess my limitation as a director is that um, I like to uh, create a, a beautiful image and then the script is secondary. Mm -hmm. um, much of the dialogue in the Arcadian, I, I, when I originally wrote it, uh, much, much more that people said. And uh, I learned that maybe I want to say the same thing with a look or with tension, you mm -hmm. know? <laughs> Um, just another question, no, because please, please. about the, the graphic novel world, mm -hmm. uh, your movie uh, reminds me of authors like Alan Moore or mm -hmm. Ed Brubaker or Neil Gaiman. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel similar to one of these? Mm. Um, I actually, I, it, it's funny, I, I've never met Neil Gaiman. I've never met him. Um, mm -hmm. But I, Neil Gaiman actually wrote me a very nice letter. <laughs> a couple really? Of, yes, a couple of years ago. <laughs> after the, uh, after saw the movie? Yeah, yeah, he, he wrote a, a very, well, read my, one of my books. <laughs> oh, right. So he, uh, he wrote me a very nice letter um, about the, uh, the nature of uh, fans and artists and things, so I, I feel you know, very honored that, uh, that he reached out to that. Um, but uh, I, I actually feel more like Alan Moore. Mm. Um, I, I feel more that uh, our stories are, are in closer alignment. We have a, um, a very um, complicated relationship with people. <laughs> we don't always see the good in okay. our superheroes. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Dreyer. Thank you. Grazie, Thank you. Mr. Dreyer. Grazie a Ravenna Nightmare Film Festival.